Okay, I've been binge watching Poppy videos on YouTube. I I just ate a bowl of raw cherries and I don't really feel too good right now. So why don't we do something normal for a change? Let's watch a Ken Russell movie because oh that's just some normal stuff. Now on this channel I've I have reviewed a Ken Russell film before in the form of Tommy. Obviously, the film version of the album made by The Who. Now I love the album. Eh, the film's okay. It, it's kind of mediocre to me, but I can see how Ken Russell is this visionary filmmaker. From the films I've seen of his, and, and you know, I haven't reviewed every single one of them because I've seen some of his films before I started reviewing on YouTube, you know, from the films I've seen of his, he's definitely one of those madman directors. Like, he has this idea of an image, and he will contort and distort, and he will exploit anything in his grasp to kind of create that idea in his mind onto the screen. And that's something that I completely respect, you know, directors like Fellini or Kubrick, and to a crazy extent at this point, Ken Russell. Now, the devil, the devils. You know, the film in question right now was an extremely controversial film when it came out in 1971. You can tell by it having an X rating, yet having one of the biggest stars of all time, Oliver Reed, in it. You know, it was extremely, extremely controversial, mostly because it's a true story about this terrible thing that happened. It also, like, depicts extreme... Um, violence and extreme skepticism within the church and the government, you know, it destroys these glor glorified images of royalty back in the day. There's a lot of boobs. <laughs> a, a lot a lot of fucking boobs. And obviously, because it's directed by Ken Russell, it's all done in the most exploitive, direct, most non-glossed over way you can think of. Now, let's just get into the movie, because... You know, if we just get into the controversy, we can, like, talk for hours. Now, the big theme of the film, obviously, is the idea of corruption. And because the film is based on a true story, it has a lot to go for. Now, what I love about the fact that how it really goes with the idea of corruption is that nobody comes out as a pure hero. Either you're part of the corrupt government or you're an anti-hero. In the case of our main hero, pay, uh, played by Oliver Reed... He's definitely an extremely flawed character. You know, he's he kind of bends these extremely, you know, obtuse religious rules for his own safety and for his own lust. You know, he's not the most perfect priest in the world. You know, he had sex with a lot of women. He has fallen in love with a lot of women. He has done things that a lot of priests should not do. But his heart is, you know, in the right place. He's just kind of like... He's kind of out, out, out in the world, and he's not really he's not really able to emotionally grasp onto things until he actually meets this woman who's kind of on the same level on his ideals of religion and ideals of love and ideals of marriage. So when he finally meets that woman, he kind of comes into peace of uh, of oneself, and he actually becomes a better person through it. You can see the character development going on. But it also shows shows you that this is a flawed character. We're not trying to portray this person as a perfect human being, which is obviously a much more realistic portrayal of any situation. Um, it also shows the corrupt side of that era, and it is truly, truly, truly screwed up. The king is an extremely fucked up person. Like, he's killing people in bird costumes for fun. Which is something that I, I can easily imagine the royal, royalty doing back in, like, what, the 17th century? Like, was this based based in, like, 1634? You know, it's based on, like, this big um, genocide that happened with the religious holy war wars and this one priest who was killed and condemned for false accusations just for the government to rule this one part of the country. Like, it's a really fucked up... Um, story and it's completely real and because of the story that we are kind of given you know we need to portray the government and royalty and the church in itself in its most you know um shall we well, depraved way i i hate that word so much it's such a pretentious word but that's probably the best word to use it it's to show them in the most depraved way possible and we see the king just 
basically kind of subtly mentioning fornication and sex and just absolute corruption of anything innocent. And, you know, obviously, like, he, he's killing peasants in bird costumes. And, of course, the main corruption we're trying to talk about in this film, the church. You know, the church forces the ideas of devils and lust to overrule certain people, especially the nuns who are ex extremely exploited in this film. Like, they have fragile minds, obviously. Like, nuns... I do kind of respect nuns when it comes to the fact that they have to actually endure all of their, you know, lust towards men and, you know, wanting things. You know, they, ne they need to kind of, like destroy all of their wantings and their and just devote her, themselves to god that's something i respect and to see that just crumble down in this film is kind of a shocking thing to watch and but you totally un understand why the nuns crumble down like they were about to kill those people like the main church is trying to like force these nuns to kind of follow their way to solve this problem to kill the main character priest to get to, to get the land that, that they want for the government and the way the power corruption sinks with the corruption of faith is really well done um and of course the scenes where they exploit and they force these ideas of lust and the devils into their minds are extremely dirty are extremely dark are extremely extremely disturbing and it's just good old Ken Russell showing us the ways of the dark side. Um, there's also an extremely surreal element to this film, because although it's trying to tell you a true story, a story that should be told, it's still a film. So Ken Russell still knows how to like portray the whole situation realistically, but at the same time in a very artistic way. You know, there are won wonky, very you know weird, noise rock-ish soundtracks going on in the background there are, there are, there are a lot of weird dialogue like there's this one scene where these two doctors are trying to cure a woman and you know the Oliver Reed character comes in and tells them what the hell are you doing and he, he there's this dead crocodile in the middle of the room and he throws it away and the two doctors are like not the crocodile and there's there are these really extremely surreal moments that just kind of comes out of nowhere but it kind of adds your interest for the film. It's just not this boring set piece of a movie. It has these weird moments for you to kind of come back into if you're not getting into the story overall. Obviously, the acting's great. Oliver Reed, one of my favorite actors, actors of all time. In every single film I've seen of him, he's absolutely amazing. Like, he, he's not really good with facial expressions. Like, he's not the greatest facial expression actor, but when it comes to voice acting he's absolutely amazing there's so much like um strong stances and strong you know conviction in his voice but obviously the main the show stealer is obviously vanessa redgrave playing the main nun who's being corrupted and exploited to all hell and she just fully embodies these ideas of oppressed sexuality and guilt which Seems to be an extreme, you know, an extreme obsession for UK filmmakers back in the 70s. But still, like, she's, she just embodies those ideas and just goes all nuts. Like, she just goes all crazy and it's absolutely amazing to watch. And, yeah, the film overall... It tells an it tells an, it tells a story that's very important to tell, but it doesn't demonize the church and it does it doesn't demonize faith. At the same time, it doesn't overly respect the idea of faith. It doesn't overly respect the idea of religion. It just kind of walks this middle ground that becomes very objective, and that's a very important thing when it comes to films about religion. You can't just bash religion, nor can you just overly glorify religion you kind of need to walk the middle ground to see both ways to show a more bigger perspective and this film did that and for a film that could have easily gone to one side because it's such a shocking story it takes that middle ground seriously and it goes with it till the end and that's absolutely respectable now there is one problem although i feel like it could have been a bigger problem back then it's not as big of a problem now um I did read Roger Ebert's review for this movie, and the the basic thing that he's saying is that the film tells you a very important story, 
but at the same time for the film for the story to be interesting for the audience ken russell exploits violence and sex because there's this really scar sarcastic line in his review where he says all the nuns are naked and stacked as in you know big boobs which probably was not real in reality and i can see why i feel like the exploitation of violence is less less of a problem now like obviously now violence has gone off, off the roof up the roof at this point violence is kind of a meaningless thing in the movie and i wasn't really shocked with the violence in this film. like i'm the kind of guy who watches a clockwork orange and i don't flinch at all so the violence wasn't really that big of a deal now the exploitation of sex now i'm not the most you know i don't give a shit if you exploit sex but when it comes to this kind of a story and this kind of a topic exploitation of sex is kind of a problem because you kind of need to portray it in a realistic way and yet boobs everywhere you know i don't mind boobs being everywhere why not i'm a guy i'm a straight guy i like boobs but when it comes to a film that's trying to tell you an extremely important story it's kind of a problem it kind it's kind of a deal breaker but still i feel like the film has aged well and it's definitely extremely well made enough for me to kind of forgive it but still it is a slight problem but anyways the film is still worth a watch if you're a ken russell fan you've probably already seen it anyways but still amazing film definitely worth to watch very good 3.5 out of 4 easily so yeah go watch it the devils 3.5 out of 4 bye